Come on and get on your feet. Get on your feet and let's praise God together. Say this. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Say where, where would I be? Come on, say it again. 
I was listening to that song and if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side where would I be? And it, it, it causes me to reflect if I could just be transparent there, I've had so many mishaps in my life that I can't I, I got so many stories about about bad decisions and bad things and mis mishaps and wrong turns and uh, things that I wish I had not done. And, you know, you know, and, and thank God for praying parents. Thank God for a praying mother. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Now, I, this may not apply to all of you, but it applies to somebody else beside me. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, who opened up jailhouse doors, who guided surgeons' hands, who, who took uh, uh, an addictive nature and an addictive man and set him on a, a, a whole different plane. Who gave him a career and, 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 and allowed him to have a, a moderate medium of success. I, I don't know, maybe somebody else here thinks about if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Not my side, but your side. If it had not been for the Lord who guided you through difficult situations, who held surgeons' hands steady, who, who gave you favor on the job, who kept the fire from burning you when it burnt your house, who, who kept the robber away from you, who protected you as you traveled the streets. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. See, these songs tend to mean something. We're not just singing to be singing. This is a, a time of worship and a time of praise. And I would like to encourage you on this Sunday morning on the eve of the change of season. It's been winter in the land and spring is on the way. And spring, it denotes a new season, a, a new birth. And if you just open yourself up, God has something new He will do for you. It's morning time. I'm, I'm so glad to be here today. Are you glad to be here today? Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this Sunday, God. We thank you for being God that is on our side. We come this morning, Father, to worship you. We come this morning, Father, to give you the glory. We come this morning, Father, to praise you, God. We come this morning, Father, we recognize that you are God, Father. We just decree and declare that we want you to be the God in our lives, that we come today to surrender to your will and to say, hold Holy, holy, holy. Thank God Almighty, Father. We come this morning asking for your mercy and your grace, God. We come this morning, Father, because we realize that you are a saving God. That all we have to do is surrender. All we have to do is believe, God, that you came to earth, that you lived, you walked, you were crucified on the cross, and that you were real, you rose on the third day. And God, now, Jesus, you sin in heaven intercessing for us. We were reconciled and restored back to you. And God, we are so grateful. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning, if you would stand with me. Our scripture this morning from the book of Psalms, the 51st 
division, reading, starting at verse 1 and ending in verse 12. Psalms 51, verses 1 through 12 in the King James Version. I like the message version, but sometimes that old prose of King James is what I grew up with. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According to the multiple of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. My sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thy dearest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part shall thou make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities, creating me a clean heart. O oh God, and renew in me, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. We thank God for his word.
college age youth members of COD, you're eligible for free resume help. Please check your e-blast for the link and schedule your appointment today, amen. This offer is available through April 7th. Why is this important? It's important because many times people judge you and measure you based on what they see on paper even before you get in the room. Now I know when you get in the room you're going to show out and show up. But the paper allows for you to hurry up and get in the room. <laughs> Y'all can get that. Amen. And so we want you to have everything you need because we are desiring to go. Amen. To the next level. We are pressing our way to this altar for prayer. And I need you to go and look at Bible study on last Wednesday. Because I believe God sent us a rainbow word. When you read your Bible, when you start off in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, here's what God said. God said that we ought to rule, dominate, multiply, and fulfill the earth. Rule, dominate, multiply, and fulfill the earth. I'm going to say that one more time so that it can hit your heart. Rule, dominate, multiply, and fulfill the earth. That's the mandate God has given us. When you get to Genesis 11, the people, they got content. God had to scatter them or else they would have stayed right there. I'm talking to somebody this morning to let you know that the agitation that you're feeling in your spirit is because God don't want you to settle. God is trying to get you to move to a higher level. Because there's a mandate on your life to rule, dominate, multiply, and fulfill. That's why you're feeling the pain and the frustration that you're feeling right now. Because God is trying to stir you up. That tension, that tension ain't even from the enemy. Yes, sir. That tension from God. Because he's not going to let you sit on the sideline and be mediocre. He wants you to rule, dominate, multiply. Press your way to this altar and pray like you, ready to rule, dominate, multiply, and fulfill. Come on, press your way. Press your way. David says, I would have given up, would have thrown in the towel. Had I not believed, I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living.
corporately let's begin to pray in the room Christine thanks we call your name right now Rita Fisher, we call your name right now, God. Trees Barry, we call your name right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Stronghold, loose right now, God. Doors right now, open right now, God. We come right now, God, knees bent, head bowed, God. Believing that you still sit on the throne and you still have all power. We praise you right now, God, pressing our way to this altar, believing that you are able. To do exceedingly in the book, God, that which we never thought, dream, or imagine. And so we praise you, God, and we give you glory, God, because we know that you are a prayer answering God. We thank you this morning, God, for the opportunity that we have, oh wretched ones, God, to press our way. And so we ask right now, God, create in us a clean heart and renew our right spirit, God. Somebody, God, it took everything they had to press their way, God, but they can find peace in you, God, because you care. And I'm praying right now, God, that when we leave it at this altar, we move and leave and go, God, believing, God, that now it's your battle, God. Now it's your situation to fix and your situation to turn around, God. But we know you are evil, God. Not just because what we read in scripture, not just because we heard in a song or a preach word. We know you are able, God, for what you have done in our lives, God. How you have made a way over and over and over again, God. How you have continually, God, looked beyond all of our faults, God. And you have met our needs. Come on, God. Open up the windows of heaven, God. And pour out a double portion, God, of your love, your strength, and your power, God. We declare to the enemy that the stronghold is being loose right now, God. That the shackle is being broken right now, God. A miracle, God, it's on the way. A healing, God, it's on the way. Deliverance, it's on the way, God. And so, God, the battle is already won, God. And we are already on victorious, the victory side, God. We are praying right now, God, that you, God, will continue to show us signs and wonders, God. Miracles and blessings, God. We claim right now, God, that if you would purge us, God, we would be clean. And if that you would wash us, God, we shall come through like snow, God. We are praying this morning, God. Believe in my faith, God, that we have the victory in the name of Jesus, God. Depression must go in the name of Jesus, God. Grief must go in the name of Jesus, God. A poverty spirit may go in the name of Jesus, God. Low self-esteem may go, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Jealousy is released in this house in the name of Jesus, God. Hatred is released in this house, God, in the name of Jesus. And we feel like the songwriter, God, that the presence of you, God, is in the room, God. The power of you, God, is in the room, God. The joy of you is in the room, God. The strength of you is in the room, God. The peace of you is in the room, God. The love of you is in the room, God. Lift up my brother head. Lift up my sister head. That they may see your mighty hand, God. Move in this house, God. On the bed of affliction, God. Move in this house. Somebody is sick right now, God. Move, God. Somebody is in a battle right now, God. Move, God. Somebody's about to lose their mind. Move right now. Somebody's family is under attack. Move right now, God. Somebody's marriage is under attack. Move right now, God. Somebody's career is under attack. Move right now, God. Somebody's finances is under attack. Move right now, God. We declare, God, that we will stand still and see the salvation of you, God. We will stand still, God, and see you win this battle, God. We will stand still, God, and watch you bring us through it and bring us over it and bring us around it. And so, God, we praise your name in advance, God. We release a hallelujah in advance, God.
God. We clap our hands in advance, God. We open up our mouths in advance, God. Zion has come to worship you. Zion has come to worship you. Zion has come to worship you, to bow before your presence and declare that you are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, deserving of all the glory, deserving of all the honor, and deserving of all the praise. We ask this in your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ's name. Amen? Now if you know God will do it, would you put your blessed hands Come on, if you know God will do it, would you put your blessed hands together? Come on, anybody feel like the presence of the Lord is here? You can feel it in the atmosphere. Come on, the songwriter says that the presence of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. He said the power. Anybody feel like the power of the Lord is here? Come on, anybody can touch and agree with me? You feel like the power of the Lord is here? Come on, tap in right now and let's worship God. Come on, tap in right now and let's see the mighty hand of God. Come on, don't, don't, don't just do it for you, but do it for the family that you represent. Do it for the friends that you represent. Do it for the situation. Come on, anybody, anybody. The presence of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. Come on, I can feel it in the atmosphere. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Come on, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 And so we thank you right now, God, for your presence and your power. Amen. 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 And praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Before we dismiss our young people as they go and practice for Resurrection Sunday, uh, we just want to celebrate that God has led family to us. Amen. And this is their first time in the sanctuary with us. And so Claudius Johnson and Terry Sherman, we say welcome in this house. Come on, city. Come on, y'all can do better than that. They can be at home making bacon and grits, but they came to worship God at the city of David. Amen. And so we say welcome in this house. Welcome in this house. Amen. Have your way in this house. Do whatever God is leading you to do in this house. Amen. Amen. Please, please, please. Allow for me. Because I know we get so hypocritical as church folk and we act like everybody got to have it together and everybody got to be on the right side. Amen. But if you would just permit, it's, it's that time. So don't nobody stop me and say, why are you here? I'm, it's that time. I want to pour in the cup some people. I want to pour into their cup. I want to pour into their cup. Brother John Corwell, Proud Corwell, joined our church and he here faithfully. Thank you, my brother. I'm praying that God has been given to you. Signs of wonders. Miracles and blessings. Brother Gil Gregory Wilbur, he joined our church. Amen. Faithful in his service. I'm praying that God is showing you, you, and showing you him like never before in this season. The Williams Brothers here every Sunday rising, Zion, and Chase here every Sunday pressing their way I pray about our brothers that God is showing you and showing him like never before. Mark, Alexis, Jasmine. Amen. Amen. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. And she's pressing me away. I pray God is showing you and showing him like never before. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate. It's their time. I'll call your name one day, but it's their time. Amen. Press it away. Amen. Amen. I'm looking cold. I have to preach the peace on the folks in the church. I, I 
I just want to celebrate God. I just want to give God the glory. Excuse me. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Amen. I just want to celebrate God and what God is doing and his faithfulness. Amen. We've been asking for me to come to the church house. Amen. So I just want to give God glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Our young people are now dismissed, amen, to go to youth church. Our music minister is coming forth. This being March, this being Women's History Month, it would be derelict of me not to put before us a preacher, and then a preacher that happens to be a woman. Amen, I said it the right way. We have one in this house, amen. So after this music ministry has gone forth, the next more she will hear, is that of Pastor Shirley Coleman Knight. Come on, stretch up your hands over her. Come on, say a word, Pastor Shirley. Say a word. Preach, black woman. Preach. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.
Congress declared March as National Women's History Month. A special presidential proclamation is issued every year with honors. The extraordinary of American women under the presidential office of Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. You remember Jimmy Carter, don't you? Yeah. The National Women's Month celebration has its roots stemming from the organizing efforts of women in the early 20th century. Mm -hmm. Purple, green, and white was chosen in honor of the women who have paved the way and continue to do so today. The flower, mimosa flower, represents symbol of strength, sensibility, and sensitivity. And so as we look at our theme, the women who advocate for equity, diversity, and inclusion recognizes women throughout the country who that for a positive future, we need to eliminate bias, and discrimination entirely from our history. We're going to look at some well-known women who contributed to our society. I don't know how much black history you learned while you were in college, or while you were in high school or elementary, but to name a few, because if I, I tried to name all of them, we'd be here all day. <laughs> and so I chose one of the ones who was just Sojourner Truth. Such so, so, Sojourner Truth was an American abolitionist and activist for um, African American civil rights women, women's rights and alcohol temperance. So Jeremy True was born into slavery in Swartikeo. Mm -hmm. Her full name was Isabella Bottomfree. She died November 26, 1883. Now, as we study our history, and if you ever took a black history class while you were in college. You learned a lot about our black people and what they discovered. And yet we was not even given credit for a lot of things that we did as blacks. But Harriet Tubman is perhaps the most well known of all the Underground Railroad conductors. During a 10 year span, she made 19 trips into the South and escorted over 300 slaves to freedom. Now you know she was really taking a risk. 300 slaves she led to freedom. And as she pointed out to Frederick Douglass in all of her journeys, she never lost a single passage. Praise God. Tubman was born as a slave in Maryland's Dorchester County around 1820, and she died in 1913. I don't know if you remember Shirley Chisholm. Shirley Chisholm was born November 30th, 1924, in Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. And she died January 1st, 2005, in Ormond Beach, Florida. Shirley Anita Chisholm was an American politician who in 1968 became the first black woman to be elected to the United States 
United States College. Her famous saying was, you don't make progress by standing on the sidelines whimpering and complaining. You make progress by implementing ideas. If that didn't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair, she says. We must reject not only the stereotypes that others have of us, but also those that we have of ourselves. And so in January 1972, she announced her candidacy for the President of the United States of America. This made her the first black woman to seriously campaign for a major party's nomination. Her slogan was, unbought, unbossed, I am and always will be a catalyst for change. And she served another 11 years in Congress. Let's look at uh, Rosa Parks. We've heard the story of, about Rosa Parks throughout the years. And Rosa Parks was born February the 4th, 1913 in Tuskegee, Alabama. She died October 24, 2005 in Detroit, Michigan. Rosa Louise, my colleague Parks, was an American activist in the Civil Rights Movement, best known for her pivotal role in the Montgomery Bus Boycott. Rose Park defiance of an unfair segregation law which required black passengers to defer to any white person who needed a seat by giving up their own. Yeah. And that's sad, but that's the way it was. That if a white person got on the bus, you had to get out of your seat and give them your seat. After Parks died in Detroit 2005, at the age of 92, she became the first woman to lie in honor in the Capitol Rotunda in Washington, D.C. Now, let's look at Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama was the former first lady of the United States. And one thing I do know about her, she, as she held that position, she changed a lot of things in that White House. The way that most of the president's wives were dressing, she changed that. She knew how to wear her clothes. She knew how to speak with dignity, yeah. Yeah. Michelle Obama. She is also an American attorney and author, born January the 17th, 1964, in Chicago, Illinois. Her education was Harvard Law School, 1988. Princeton University from 1981 to 1985. Her children, Malia Ann Obama and Sasha Obama. She made an imprint while she was the first lady in that White House. In many ways, in her speaking, in her dressing, and how she approached other people. Now, we have another black woman who has came a long ways 
in her lifetime. And that is none other than Ophir Winfrey. Ophir Winfrey was an American host and television producer. She was an actress and she was an author and media proprietor. She chaired and CEO of Harbor Production. She was, she's aged 70 years. She was born in 1954, January the 29th. And Oprah was born poor in rural Mississippi. Age 17, won the Miss Black Tennessee Beauty pageant. And Oprah Winfrey was a net, she has a net worth of 2.8 billion US dollars. <laughs> she is a philanthropist who reached as the success extend to nearly all aspects of media. Oprah Winfrey is the wealthiest black woman in America. There is another, Maya Angelou. You know who Maya Angelou is. She wrote a lot of poetry and she wrote books. Maya Angelou was born April the 4th, 1928, St. Louis, Missouri. She died May 28th, 2014 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. She won three, mind you, three Grammys. She faced overcoming of groups, prejudice, and discrimination. She wrote poems and books. Why did the cage bird sing was one of her books. She was most famous for the poem Phenomenon Woman, and many more, more. She was an actress and a teacher. She was worth 10 million at the time of her death. Now, we want to look at some of the musicians doing that era. We have Robin Rahani Fenty, and she is a successful musician and entrepreneur with a net worth of 1.4 billion U.S. dollars. She is the second richest black woman in the United States of America. We don't want to forget some of our other musicians, like Diana Ross, who sung a song, Touch Me, in the morning. Whitney Houston was famous for a lot of the songs that she sung. We have Gladys Knight and Aretha Franklin. And we don't want to forget D.I. Martin Wick. And I need a baker, just to name a few. <laughs> we look to these heroes from our past and present for lessons and inspiration as we continue their important work into the future. Now, we want to look at some Bible women, to name a few. There's so many that time will not permit me to give them all. But well, one of them is Esther. Esther is a young Jewish woman living in the Persian diaspora who finds favor with the king, becomes queen, and risks her life to save the Jewish people from destruction when the court official Haman persuades the king to authorize 
a pogrom against all of the Jews of the empire. Or pogrom. It's just a decree. It's a violent riot incited with the aim of massing or expelling an ethnic or religious group, partially, particularly the Jews. There was another great woman, and her name was Abigail. She's in the Old Testament. And if you study your word and read your Bible, you will learn something about Abigail. The wife of Nabal of southern Judah, on whose death she became one of the first wives of King David. Abigail was also sensitive to the Lord's good intentions for David and therefore submits herself to the Lord's appointed ruler. Have you heard of Deborah? Yes. She was another great woman. Deborah was the prophetess and only female judge in the history of Christianity. She was an exceptional military leader. She was fearless and she was obedient to God. She led the Israelites to victory and out of bondage. Now mind you this next name, this particular woman, her name is Rahab. And I know we know the story of Rahab. Rahab was a woman from Jericho who helped the nation of Israel spy sent by Joshua to gather information about the city before the Israelites conquest of Canaan. However, her initial job was at a Harlem basic. She was a harlot, which we are better known and as a prostitute. Despite her past mistakes, so that lets us know that you you can make mistakes, but God is a forgiving God. And thank God, He is a forgiving God. Because when we look back over our lives and know the things that we have done that was not right in the sight of God, where would we be? God used her in a mighty way. Her name is mentioned in Hebrews 11:31. I call that a great woman of God. Whenever your name is placed in the Hall of Record or the Hall of Fame, yeah. it says something about you. But one of the main women in our Biblical history that we want to remember is Mary. You know Mary, don't you? <laughs> Mary is the mother of Jesus, who is celebrated for her extraordinary trust in the divine conception of Jesus Christ. And the scripture says, in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever, don't you want to be a part of the whosoever? Yeah. Believers in him shall not perish, but what? Have ever lasting life. I know we're all sitting here today, we want that everlasting life. The mother of Jesus, Mary. She was the only one worthy of carrying the child because she was a virgin and she had never been touched by a man. There are many other great women in the Bible, such as Ruth and Naomi, Mary Magdalene, 
Anna, Dorcas, Priscilla, Phoebe, Eunice, and Lois. What does God say about our strong women? Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at times to come. The good news, with God enveloping us in love and strength, we have absolutely no reason to fear for the future or life after death. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. That sounds like the, the, the Proverbs 31 woman, doesn't it? How can I be a strong woman of God? The daily habits of Bible reading and prayer are so important. And I know you know that. And I thank God that we have a prayer line here at City of David. One is at 6 o'clock a.m. in the morning, and the other one is at 7 p.m. And so if you ever want to come on those prayer lines, let us know. Let me say this. I know you know that. Let me say this to you in a different way. It is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace. My God. You have your spiritual life whenever you read God's word. That's why the scripture tells us, study to show thyself a proof unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. But we can't rightly divide the word of truth yeah. If we don't open up this book, yeah. we need to open up this book. Yeah. We need to open it up daily. Yeah. We need to get spend some special time yeah. and set it aside and say, well, I'm going to read uh, a couple of the Psalms and I'm going to study those. Or I'm going to open up the book where the beginning was in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and earth yes. was about four yes. and boy, yes. and darkness come upon yes. the face of the earth. Yes. Yes. We need to get in this word. Yes. We need to get in the word so that we can hear that it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence and know he, that the Lord, he is God. But it is he that has made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. And be thankful unto him. For the Lord is good. His mercy is ever And his truth endures to all generations. You know, it just comes to my mind. You remember Mahalia Jackson? Yeah. Oh, she was a great woman of God. She was a great singer. She sung at the Wardorf Historia. Her name was placed in the Hall of Fame. Where is your name going to be placed? Are you going to be a part of the Hall of Fame? Are you going to get it together while you're down here? Praise God, whom all blessings from. So how to, can I become a powerful praying woman? Number one, commit yourself. Two, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. And if you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. Okay. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean, and lean not to thine own understanding. Oh. Yes, yes. 
Oh, in all of our ways, acknowledge him. And guess what? He shall. He shall. He shall direct thy path. And I say to you women of the city of David, be strong. Be vigilant. Be courageous. Be grateful. And allow the Lord to lead you where he wants you to go. However, that can only happen if you study his word. Get involved in the things of your church. Don't just be a bench member. Do whatever you can to help the pastor in his endeavor in moving this church forward. Well, I know that when he gets ready for us, we will eventually be in our own place. So we just want to stay in prayer and pray without ceasing. God is good all the time. And all the time, he's good. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never failed me. All my days, I've been held in your arms. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Guess what? And I will say, oh, the good man of God.
it was the men that got married to other women. So why are you not sending the men back to them? Y'all ain't see, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't getting it, y'all ain't getting it. When you read the text, the only thing that Ezra said is send the women back. Amen? So I'm trying to highlight the fact that women have had to endure all the way since 1400 before Christ came. To, and so that's any time you see sisters pressing their way, we ought to be on the side and like, no, man, like we ought to be on the side and like, clapping because they've had, you know, I'm teaching you about, they've had to endure so much. And so for every woman under the sound of my voice, I salute you. And I salute you. And I salute you. And I declare like nobody else, you got it going on. You got it going on. You got it going on. And if you can receive that, sister, can you just throw your hand up and say, I got it going on. I'm a queen. I got it going on. God's on my side. I got it going on. I'm going to press my way. I'm going to press my way. Amen. Sister, can you receive that word? You got it going on. You as bad as you want to be. You a bad mama jamma. Would you go ahead and give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Pastor Shirley, for reminding us that, sister, you as bad as you want to be. Amen. Amen. Pray. Come on, stand all over this house. Stand on hallelujah. Read that. Read that. Pray about it before you read it. But read Ezra 9 and 10. I'm going to blow your mind. Because we think of Ezra as a prophet and a hero. It lets you know every now and then a prophet and a hero can get sideways and can have misogynistic ways. And that's why we can't elevate bishops and preachers. We got to elevate God. Talking back to me, you got to elevate. Ain't no idolatry. We worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. First, you feel the battle of the kingdom. Battle of the kingdom. You want to be connected to this God that has pushed all these women that she preached about. You know you never prayed the prayer of salvation. If you would just raise your hand. Last week, Brother Charles Taylor, we need his number to connect with him. Send him a message. If you know that you never prayed the prayer of salvation, and you want to pray that prayer, if you would just raise your hand, we can get that done right here. Online, if you're watching, if you would just say hashtag salvation, we'll call you and pray that prayer us. Amen. If you know you need a church home, you know, place, sister, that's going to remind you, you bad. You need a place, brother, that's going to remind you you're a king. I would love for you to be the next member here at the city of David. If you know I'm talking to you, if you would just raise your hand in this house, I won't make you come down. In fact, I'll come to you right now and shake your hand as the newest member here at the city of David. If you would just raise your hand right now and say, I want to make it official. I want to join this house. Amen. Online, if you would just say hashtag all in, we'll accept you right now as our newest and our next member. Here at the city of David. Amen. Let us pray. God, we say thank you. For all our lives. You have been faithful. And we will declare. The goodness. Of the Lord. We love you God. And we adore you. Praise you. Magnify you. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So sisters, you got it going on. Amen. Walk in that authority and walk in that power. Now that we have received the word, we want to give back to God a portion of that which God has given us. And so if you know that God has placed a blessing in your life, in your hands, you have an opportunity to give back to God a portion of that. If you would just raise your hand. Ushers will serve you with an offering envelope or a prayer request form. We pray here at the city of David seven days a week. Amen. Our prayer warriors lay hands on those requests. And so if you would fill it out, even if you bring in your offering, if you would place it in the basket as you leave the sanctuary, we will greatly appreciate it. If you're online, you can mail it to P.O. Box 485, Ardena, California, 90248. 
Give whatever denomination God is telling you to give. Don't forget the missionary offering that we might bless in and outside the house. You may choose Venmo at City of David 2017. You may choose Cash Out, Dollar Sign, City of David 2017. You may also choose Givelify, a church, and logo. Give whatever denomination God is telling you to give. Amen. Amen. Help me to celebrate. Sister Sayla sold over 3,100 boxes of girls' cards. Come on, y'all can help. See, we gotta learn how to celebrate when somebody else make their goal, so that we can make our goal. Amen. She sold over 3,100 boxes of Girl Scout cookies. Amen. Amen. And that's gonna allow for her to go to Paris. Amen. 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 Praise God. And so we say salute, my sister, because it's that kind of ingenuity. That's going to take you and this church to the next level. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our daughters and Naomi and Ruth have a presentation, and then we'll be ready to go. Amen. Praise God. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning to my city of David family and the women of this church. Just as a reminder, we are celebrating all of you this month. You are enough. Every single one of us have had an opportunity to be challenged, but we had a word today that showed us that we are enough. Yes. Nothing else to be said, just celebrate each other. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Treshawn Walking here. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Special shout out to the ladies in the house. It's ladies night. It's ladies night to the celebration. All right, all right. So I have some of my very special speakers today that I have the pleasure of presenting an award to. And that young lady is Sister Ray Nelson. Wow!
cover us, be under us, to sustain us, be in front of us, to lead us, be behind us, to protect us, be alongside us, to comfort us, be in us, to love us. Now unto him that's able to do exceedingly and above to him the only wise and true God, glory, majesty, dominion, power, now henceforth and forevermore. Let us say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Love you. Have a great week and a wonderful day. Hallelujah.